What is up everyone, JD here. Hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm excited to bring you my full review for the Kaiser Escort. What we'll be doing today is going through knife specs, size comparisons, and then we'll go ahead and jump into some thoughts and impressions on this Escort. Let's start off with the specs. The Escort has a 3.31 inch drop point blade done in 154 cm and a coated blade here. Handles that measure out at 4.57 inches made with steel liners and micarta handles or scale micarta scales. Overall length is 7.8 inches and claimed weight on the website is 3.77 ounces. Let's go ahead and verify that. So 3.8, they claim 3.77, could be right. There could be some small variances on that as well. What I'd like to do is go ahead and jump into some size comparisons for the Kaiser Escort. First, we're gonna bring out the Benchmade Bugout. This is a great size comparison here. Very similar size. You got a little bit more girth going on with the Escort, but not too much. Other crossbar lock knife is gonna be the SIG K320 made by Hogue, which is a little bit bigger, both from the pivot to the handle and then from the pivot to the tip of the blade, a little bit longer. It is a little bit more in between, closer in length to the bug out, but a little bit more girthy less girthy. So definitely feel like it's kind of in between the two of them. Let's go ahead and bring out the Demco AD 20.5, which is another interesting size comparison. And then we'll bring out the Spyderco Shaman for anyone out there that has the Shaman. You can see this knife is really kind of in between. Le definitely has more than the Sharkfoot one. So let me grab the clip point. That might be a little bit better of a reference because this is going to now get you almost nose to nose with that length and then almost nose to nose with that handle length and it's going to have around the same girth as the clip point variant i just prefer that shark foot for the size comparisons because it's a little bit smaller now let's go ahead and bring out a couple of budget knives we'll bring out the vostid raccoon which is going to be damn near identical in size and then we'll bring out the civivi conspirator which is going to be slightly bigger so let me line that pivot up a little bit better and I think this one's a little off too. So as you can see, it has roughly about the same handle, but it's got a different line going, design line going on with it, but very, very close in size to that raccoon. And while we have the raccoon out here, let's go ahead and do some thickness comparisons as well. So you can see the Kaiser Escort is going to be a tad bit thicker than it is on let me go underneath. I just realized my hands are focusing for whatever my fingers on my fingers that are above the scales. Let's do, no, that's not helping either. Let's see if we can get it to, can you focus on the knives? It's being really weird today. Let's try this. There you go. With the fingers beside it, it's doing a little bit better. Um, just a hair thicker. All that to say that it's just a hair thicker. We'll bring out the AD 20.5. You can see the AD 20.5 is thinner. And instead of the bug out, we'll go ahead and bring out the Shaman here. And you can see just a little bit thinner than the Shaman. So hopefully those size reference helps some of you out there to see how it'll carry in pocket and to see how it'll feel in hand. Now, I'm gonna start with the Ergos as I do with all knives. I really think this neutral design is super comfortable. It's a very smooth micarta scale, which surprised me. I was expecting some of what you typically see at this price point with this type of micarta. Instead of the smooth micarta, I was expecting it, and it almost feels like rich light. It almost feels like it's rich light. And I looked it up on the website that I bought it from and they listed it as my car to scales. So if this is rich light, I apologize, but it's listed as my carta. And usually, as you know, with my carta, you typically are getting like this type of finish, even this being smooth and slightly grippy, this feels more like rich light. So I might try to check a different website and I may put it up somewhere around here what this really is but getting back to the ergos very neutral ergos super comfortable on hand just a little bit hanging out the back when i'm using the finger choil if i try to choke up a little bit and split the difference with these two fingers i have a little bit more out back and i can get out to that tip a little bit better but for the push cuts it's in a 
perfect position for me. Cardboard is gonna hit my knuckle right here and I'm gonna be in the meat of the flat spot for the cuts. Speaking of cuts, this has a really good edge. Sorry, it took me a second to find a sheet of paper, but it has a really good edge. It does feel like it's a little bit a little bit more of a robust geometry. Um, and that is because I have taken this through a little bit of cardboard to test it, testing the edge here. It feels like it might even have some tape still on the edge. Yeah, no, it's cleaning up a little bit. I think where it is kind of catching, it is tearing a little bit too. And that is because I have tried to do um, some testing on here. Let me see, yeah, maybe a little bit of tape there and that stuff like that will cause it to snag to show you the edge on there. But I probably could afford to touch up the edge a little bit. Beautiful drop point on here. Uh, those fullers, unfortunately, are for looks only. You cannot get down to them. Thumb studs are the means of deployment on this knife and the crossbar lock for actuating. Now, the crossbar locks here have really nice studs on them, just like they did on the drop bear, and they're proud. So they're easy to get to, especially with the flat scales. Really good job with the thumb studs as well. Those work really nice. They're easy to get to. They fire because they're able to connect or catch the finger as you go to deploy it. Even with the work reverse flick, it works really, really well. Mine came from the factory. I'll try my best to show you here in the middle pin. So hopefully I can hold this still enough and zoom in so you can see where it's not quite at the strongest setting. It looks like it has two more to go over, which surprised me because the detent feels pretty solid. However, with any crossbar lock knife, <laughs> you can pretty easily overcome it. But I will do a disassembly video later, and I will also follow up in that disassembly, vi disassembly video to let you know how it handles being adjusted to the strongest setting. Drop point again, great, great drop point shape, very universal for an EDC blade shape, very minimal branding. It's not too bad. You got the designer logo and the escort name on there. And on this side, you got the Kaiser and the 154 CM. Now this one came in with 154 CM in either my Carter or Rich Light. I'm still not sure what that is at this point while I'm doing the video. It is listed on White Mountain Knives and Amazon for $109. At White Mountain Knives, they were sold out, but if you sign up for notifications, you get 10% off with my discount code, but they were in stock on the Amazon website. So $110 is kind of that weird spot. So for $110 from Tucson, you can get the TS270 titanium frame lock with 14C28N, 154CM is going to be a steel I like a little bit better. It's going to be a little bit more tough. It's going to be corrosive resistant. It's going to have good edge retention and it's going to have good ease of maintenance, which is something that I really like. If you really wanted to push the boundaries though for around $110, if you wanted when Blue Creek Knives gets them back in stock, $135.99, but if you use a discount code from one of our favorite channels, you can get 10% off of that, and it's titanium nested liner lock with 14C28N. So a couple of alternative recommendations that I wanted to make there. Now, for $110, you are also getting really close to some Spyderco lightweights. I don't have any currently. I feel shameful about that. I, I There was a couple people that wanted some that I had and they're having a hard time getting them and felt bad. Um, and I have plenty of alternative options. So I did sell them and let them go. But you can look at the Sage 5, you can look at the Para 3 lightweight, you can look at the Manix 2 lightweight that are gonna be close to this price point and typically USA made or at the very least made out of their Taiwan plant. So something to take in consideration if you don't want this because of its country of origin. But those are my alternative recommendations. Do I like this knife and can I recommend it? Yes. It is well done, thankfully, because we all know that I've had my issues with some Kaisers in the past and their warranties per program is not good. Um, so thankfully this is well done and in good shape. Everything on it seems to be working well. Just listening to the sounds. little bit of that metallic jiggle going on it's 
So just for frame of reference, we're going to be bringing out the K320 because you could get a DECA for $110 with Magna Cut or $120 with Magna Cut. I'm not sure. And that's a USA made blade. And I think you can get the bug out for 150 USA made, but it comes with the Grivery, which I think are the, yeah, Grivery, right? Which I think is a big sticking point for the bug out for some people. So that's why it's not an alternative recommendation. Um, and the K320 USA made, you can get that with the polymer handles, which is still really well made and it does not flex like cheap Grivery because they're so robust. But I think you can get that for around 135. Sorry, I didn't mean to lead into those alternative recommendations, but the sounds kind of made me think about them and bring them back out here. So I probably missed that opportunity earlier. But again, $109, you get a 10% off. You can get this for under a hundred bucks. Then you have to pay some of it back for shipping if they don't have free shipping. It's a cool knife. I, uh, I like the size of it a little bit better than the drop bear, but I think the drop bear is really cool looking too. So I kind of wish the drop bear was this size with that blade shape. It has that look. So this has a gradual drop point to it, whereas the drop bear has like almost a spear point shape to it. Um, it's pretty thin. It's a little bit more robust than I was expecting for this knife. Like it feels pretty good right here, but it, it thickens up pretty quick. Uh, not that I expect you would take that much off of the knife, but I'm saying from like a cutting geometry and feeling slicey, it gets thick like really quick behind the edge. And uh, I was a little surprised by that. Pretty cool little knife though. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, leave a like. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you follow along. Thanks to everyone out there that regularly leaves the likes, is subscribed and making comments. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a fantastic week and until next time, peace.